Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about microtonality in Reactor. And what microtonality means is you split up each octave into something other than 12 equal parts. In this case, I have a test track I'm working on where all of the octaves these instruments are working with are split up into 31 equal parts instead of 12. And that sounds something like this. You can tell on the pad in particular that there's definitely a few notes that are not possible in a traditional 12 note octave. If we take a closer look at one of these instruments, I'll play up the notes on the keyboard and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Many synthesizers these days have this functionality built into it. Um, in the case of my pad, I made this with Yuhi's Repro 5, where if you go into the tweak section and at the bottom corner there's literally a settings area where you can input what's called a dot tune file and then it'll make the synthesizer work with that. And many other synthesizers can do this as well, like Diva, Serum, I think Harmer can do it. But one of my favorite synthesizers is Native Instruments' is Reactor. And I've always wondered, because if you own the full version of Reactor, you can dig into the instrument and make changes to it, to the individual components that make the synthesizer. So I've always wondered, can you add microtonality to a Reactor instrument? It turns out, yes, you can. People have thought of that. Specifically thanks to two very helpful add-ons in the Reactor user library. The first one we'll be looking at is called Equal Tempered Scales Macro. And as you see, it has a number of presets like 19, 22, and 31 is the one I was using in this track in particular. And there's another one called Microtune 1024, which is a little more complicated, but it lets you essentially input your own microtonal scales and it'll work with that. The main difference between these two is that this one is more limited, but much easier to set up. This one is much harder to set up, but you can do far more with it, and I'll be going over both of them in this video, specifically setting them up on Native Instruments' Razor. After that, I'll cover how to set these things up on a few other reactor ensembles. And then at the end of the video, I'll briefly touch on reactor blocks and how to do microtonality in that. So, one more thing I want to point out before I begin, I strongly recommend going into your master track and adding a compressor or limiter of some kind, just in case the volume gets explosively loud for some reason. Um, it'd also be a good idea to make sure that your DAW can auto-mute a track if it gets too loud. Um, with doing this kind of stuff, I have very rarely, if ever, come across this kind of an issue, but we are dealing with the internals of a synthesizer, so it can happen. So just keep that in mind going forward. So I have Razor pulled up right now, a modified version of Razor that has the microtonality already set up. So it's going to look something like this, where I'll have the microtuning component off to the side. So for right now, I'm going to switch this out for just a completely clean stock razor and I'm going to change the preset to something I prefer and as you'll see it'll sound completely different now because my MIDI is set up to expect 31 notes per octave whereas now we're back to 12 so what you're going to want to do is click on Edit, which will only exist in the full paid version of Reactor. This, this won't work in the player. After that loads, you're going to want to go into Razor Ensemble, Razor, Synth, and Globals. And over here, head over to your files, and we're going to be using equal tempered scales macro first, the simpler of the two components. So download that, put that in wherever in your file structure you keep that kind of thing, and drag it onto this globals page. So as you see there's an input and an output. Um, where, where we're going to want to put this is in between pitch slash phase and this PGM unit. 
I'm gonna move a bunch of these other ones over to make some space. So we're gonna set this microtune component in between here and here. So if you single out the connector, you can delete that. Be sure you don't actually delete any of the components. If you do, you can head back into the panel and start over with a fresh razor again. But if you delete the wire, then you hook that up there, that up there, and that should be that. Microtonality should work in Razor. So head back to the panel, and you'll notice this new component right here. Click on this lock, and you'll be able to move this. Now there may be cleaner ways to do this other than kind of glitching out the uh, background to repeat again by, by stretching it too far. Uh, I don't care to go far enough to figure it out. So for now this will do. And you're going to want to set root to 69 most likely. And as soon as I set it back to 31 this should work. And there you go. Also keep in mind for Razor in particular this pitch knob. Um, a lot of presets start out at like negative 12 or negative 24. That's going to mess this up because we're not using a 12 note octave anymore. So actually if you set this to negative 31 as long as we're 31 here that's actually going to sound okay. But most of the time when you're just getting it set up you want to set pitch to zero. And that's how you can be sure it's going to sound fine. So, if these are all of the microtonal skills you need, then you can close the video here. However, if you want to use anything more complicated than this, we're going to need to get the other component set up. Microtune 1024, which is a little bit more in-depth, but it is completely worth it because you can do a thousand times more things with it after it is set up. Alright, so let's go and set up the other component now. So if we head back into Edit, back all the way down the structure into Globals, where we set up the first one. So here I have the files of Microtune 1024. You're going to want to select the .mdl, drag that over there, and we're going to unconnect this and put this one in its place. In the back end, it's set up exactly the same way as the other components. So you'll set up both of these components in the same way on the back end, where you try to find where it deals with pitch and kind of get the microtuning component involved in that somehow. So with that there, we'll once again click on the lock. We'll move this thing over as soon as I can grab it over to the side here. And we're almost set up. The only thing left to do... Oh, sorry, you still need to be in edit mode. The, the only thing left to do is to right-click this bottom box, File, Load Data into Table. Ah, but this is the tricky part because you won't have any compatible files yet. But, luckily, you can make them. Before I get into how to do that, I do want to talk about the description. On this and as you can tell this thing is very very old it hasn't been updated in 15 years um, the link that the author provides for the files you're supposed to use with this no longer works um, somewhere deep in this comment section I actually did find a link that really worked unfortunately I couldn't get any of those files to function um, it seems to have to do with reactor changing things over the years but luckily you don't need these files, because we can make our own, so you can completely ignore any mention in the description of files that come with this component because you do not need them. Instead, head over to this website, sevish.com slash scale workshop, I'll have this in the description. This was made by an artist and fellow YouTuber, Sevish, who is very, very, very knowledgeable about microtonal music and how all of this works. And he built this incredibly useful tool where we can create our own files in various formats 
to input into a synthesizer. So like back in my DAW, if you wanted a file compatible with Repro to change the scales in that, you could use Scale Workshop to make one. And that's what we're gonna do here. So if you go to New, Equal Temperament, and do 31 here, and leave everything else the same. Make sure this is 440, this is 69. And when you export, export in, a, in the .tune format. Sorry, right, we're gonna show that in its folder. And you cannot import this directly into the reactor component. It won't be compatible. Um, we're going to need to modify this with a text editor that has search replace that can use regular expressions. One program I like that can do that is called Sublime Text, which I'll also link to in the description. This is cross-platform and you can use it for free. So download this or another program of your choice. And then we're going to open the .tune file inside of Sublime Text. So I'll close out these that I already had open. So this is what a .tune file looks like. It's basically just a text file with some different things in it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is delete everything that isn't these note and number things. So delete the stuff up here and delete everything below line 128. So you only want these 128 lines. From there, there's some search replaces that we're gonna to need to do. So if you do Control or Command H, and make sure that this button here is enabled at the corner that enables regular expressions. So I'll have these in the description for you. First, you're gonna to want to put this in Find, and Replace should be blank, and then you click Replace All. This is gonna delete everything including and before the equal sign. So we just have these numbers. The next one you're gonna to wanna to do is you paste that in find and this in replace. And what this does is it's going to add a decimal point at, um, like at, at two numbers from the end. So like if I even add more digits onto here, it's always gonna add the decimal point there, kind of as if you're dividing the number by 100. So click replace all. And this is what we need for the reactor component. So you do save as, and instead of dot tune, just save this as a txt. And I'll just name this example so that we know that we're working with that one. So from there, I have a folder where I keep various tune files. I'm going to drag and drop that over there. Now that we have this file, we can go back to the reactor component. Not that, um, right here. And while you're still in edit mode, once again we'll right click this bottom box, do file, load data into table, and we're going to load the one that I made right there. And that's going to work. And just to prove that this is really doing something, I made a few others. So load data into table. Here's one that I made that has 23 instead of 31 notes per octave. And so we've essentially added the ability to add in our own custom .tune files after we do the work to convert them into something that this component can read. All right, so now that we know how to do that in Razor, I'm gonna cover how to do this in a few other ensembles as well. Namely, Contour, LaserBase, Spark, and SteamPipe 2 are four other ones where I've been able to go in there and figure out where to put the components. Um, I'm not completely certain if you can do this with every single one, in theory, you should be able to. There's a few where I have not been able to figure it out yet, but at least for these four, I can show you where to go and to help you figure out what kind of things to look for in terms of where to put the microtuning component.
So I'm going to start with contour. So you click edit. And contour. Yeah, and the pitch is actually just right here in contour. You don't need to dig in at all. So I'm just going to move over a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go back to files. For ease of use, I'm just going to add in this one again. So you want it to be in between note pitch and that thing right there. So. That should be that. We'll move this thing over somewhere. Set it to 31 and contour should now be microtonal. Right, so next I'm going to show laser base. So in laser base, you do edit, you go into laser base, you go into the other laser base, you go into this component that has no name, and then you go into global SRCE. And where we're going to want to put it is in between note pitch and NP right there. And it's right here. Next, I'm going to show Reactor Spark. So, edit. Spark. Spark 1.0.1. And pitch. And it's going to go between note pitch and this P dash randomize. Right, and as you can see, it's right there. And as one last one, I'm going to do Steam Pipe 2, which is actually a little bit more complicated. So here we go into Steam Pipe 2, Steam Pipe, and Voice Mode. And as you can see, Note Pitch is hooked up to a few different things. We're going to need to hook up our components to everything that Note Pitch hooks up to. So we click on that and we'll see which ones are blue. And we'll just hook this up to all of those. Then finally note pitch goes into this. And that should be that. And as one last very useful tip, so that you don't need to do all of this over again every time you use this in a project, if you right-click this, you can save the instrument as. And as you can see over in this folder where I keep custom ensembles, I have contour microtonal, laser base microtonal, I, I have a few tests with razor microtonal, and from now on if I'm composing a microtonal piece that uses one of these ensembles, Instead of just loading Razor, I would load I would load Razor Microtonal 2, for instance, or Contour Microtonal instead of the original instrument.
So one last thing I want to cover is microtonality, specifically inside of reactor blocks, which is thankfully much easier thanks to a block in the user library called Microtuner. And that's what I'm using here for the base. I made this with Monarch Micro, which is basically a port of Monarch into the reactor blocks format. So I'm going to be starting over with a fresh Monarch Micro. I'll get back to a preset somewhat similar to what we had before. And then we're going to go into Edit, Monarch Micro. And here you can see a view somewhat similar to what we had going on in the normal ensembles, but this is actually much easier for our purposes. Because for the most part, you're always going to have this utility node in component first, which is going to have pitch at the top. So there's no need to go hunting anymore for where the pitch functionality is because it's right there. And all you need to do is find all of the things that pitch connects to and get the micro tuner component in the middle. So I'll move the micro tuner here. And in this case, it's going to be both of the oscillators and this filter. So those are the three components we need to hook up right now. So we'll hook up pitch on all three of these components into Microtuner, as well as the utility node in. Back on the panel, we can see Microtuner here. You can add that wherever you want it to be. And as soon as we get it back to 31 and a root of 69, which is what I'm using in this project, this should sound about right. And that's how it works with pretty much every reactor blocks instrument that you can play. You're going to have this utility node in, and it's going to have pitch right at the top, and it's just a matter of finding what things pitch connects to. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Um, be sure to check out the description where I link to a good number of resources regarding everything discussed in this video. I'm also going to link out to a forum thread that helped me a lot while researching this and exactly how to convert .tune files into something that the reactor component can read. I'm also going to link over to a YouTuber named Savish, who was very knowledgeable on all of this, and he's actually the one that got me into microtonal music, kind of introducing me to the concept. So if you find this whole thing interesting, I highly encourage you to check out his channel and his music where he goes into loads and loads more detail than even this on how all of this works. So with that said, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.